Good evening, Bambinis. We are going to give you a good show tonight. And I have promised it's going to be exciting. Tonight is a celebration of beauties. We will bring to you the Earth Warriors. This will be one exciting night full of glam. Not only they are just beautiful women, but women full of substance and advocacies. Hi everybody, welcome to the Bambi Fuente Show. It's so great to see you all again here online on the different social media platforms for we stream our show. I hope that you will enjoy our show tonight and hope that you can share this with your friends and family as well. Last week, our pilot episode interviewed Miss Lorraine Shook, former beauty queen turned actress, producer, vice president of Carousel Productions, and producer and owner of Miss Earth beauty pageants. We ended that interview with Lorraine telling us about the groundbreaking coronation ceremony last November 29th, the only one of its kind coronation night. So we thought of following it up with the new Miss Earth beauty with beautiful winners. Okay, I'll introduce you one by one. We'll start with Miss Earth Air, Stephanie Zurich of Venezuela. Hello. Hello, Bambi. Thank you so much. And hello, everyone. Thank you so much for this amazing opportunity. I'm Stephanie Srey, Miss Earth Venezuela 2020, and now your Miss Earth Air. It's a pleasure for me to be here with my beautiful queens. Thank you so much. And then Miss Earth Water, Roxanne Alison Bayens of the Philippines. Hello. Mabuhay. Thank you for having us, Mom Bambi. Hi, everybody. This is Roxy Bands, Miss Earth Water. I hope you are all safe at your respective homes. Thanks for joining us today. And Miss Earth Fire, Nicola Rubinstein of Denmark. Hello, everyone. And hi, Bambi. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for everyone watching and I just want to say a huge thank you who's, to everyone who's been following us along the way for recognizing the importance of the issues that we're facing and being a part of the change. So thank you. Okay. And Miss Earth 2020, Lindsay Coffee of the USA. Hello. Hi, Bambi. Thank you so much for the introduction. I'm so excited to be speaking to you today, and I'm so excited to see my Earth Sisters again. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Okay. So how are you girls after winning the, the pageant, Miss Philippines? Wow, doing great. I have to be honest, it ha hasn't fully sunk in yet. I'm just so grateful with all the people sending their continuous love and support even though it's over. So I'm just so excited for this amazing year and this amazing reign with all these amazing Eco Angel sisters of mine. Wow. It's a blast. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Miss Venezuela? Well, I'm really happy because it was a big challenge in our life, but we did it. And you, Miss Denmark? I'm doing great, thank you. Um, yeah, as Roxy said, it's, it still hasn't sucking in with me yet either. So I'm just really looking forward to reigning with all my, my queen sisters and see what this year will bring of change and what we can do. So I'm very excited. So it's been like two weeks after winning the pageant. So the question is, after two weeks of winning, uh, how did you feel about it? Uh, already sunk in it to your mind that you're already a winner or are you still mm -hmm. fantasizing that you have to be a winner and you have to be a beauty queen? Todavía creo que no soy consciente de este gran logro y de este gran triunfo. Siento que no ha cambiado nada en mi vida. Soy la misma mujer, tengo los mismos sueños y las ganas de luchar por la madre tierra, pero solo hay algo distinto. Ahora tengo una familia que es el Mr. que me apoya. Wow. Well, you know, it hasn't sunk in yet, actually. It's, it's really hard to believe, but I haven't changed. I'm the same woman. I have the same goals, the same dreams. I think the only difference now is that I have a big family supporting me, the Miss Earth organization. Thank you, Bambi. Wow. How about you, Miss Denmark? 
Has it sunk it already, or are you still fantasizing to be a winner? But, but you are a queen now. How do you feel about it after two weeks of winning the crown? I mean, it still feels surreal, to be honest with you. It definitely has not sunk in yet. I've just been so overwhelmed with all the love from people. I definitely did not expect it. I think I was the dark horse of the group, and everyone, including myself, was very surprised. So I'm just so overwhelmed right now with the love and also very excited to start the work that we're going to be doing. I've already been thinking about what I want to change and bring to the table, so I'm just so excited. Wow, that's great. And how about you, Miss Bayan, Roxy Bayan, the Philippines? Well, I'm still in awe. I can say I'm on cloud nine. And it's not easy, like being the host country. There are a lot of people who would say that if Philippines wins, she, it's biased. So I think I just gave the best I could. And I think I got rewarded for all the hard work of me and my team. So I just, wow. I just couldn't be happier. And I hope I made my countrymen very proud. And how about you, Miss USA? I still pinch myself every morning because oh. I still think I'm dreaming. Uh, so I think it's going to take a while. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I continue to think I'm dreaming because this is such a once in a lifetime opportunity. I mean, it's so hard to fathom that all of this has just happened. Okay, another question. What was the reaction of your family and friends after winning the crown? Uh, Miss, uh, Miss USA? So everyone was just as shocked kind of like as I was. I mean, of course I had my, some of my friends and family that are like, oh, we knew you were going to win and like 100% believed that that was going to happen the whole time. And then of course, like my national director and stuff too, everyone was, everyone believed in me, but they were still so shocked at the same time because we made history. So that's a huge deal. So everyone was just kind of just shocked by all of this and just going down in history is one thing. And then uh, just continuing to kind of embrace what has happened and just look forward to the future. So, I mean, everyone, of course, was absolutely elated and we're just all just impressed and surprised to be here and so grateful as well. So I'm just super grateful about all of it. Congratulations. I, th I think it's the first time that USA won. Yeah. So we went down in history, which is crazy. <laughs> and how about you, Miss Denmark? I mean, I think... Friends and family were definitely surprised and also all the people who helped me because Denmark has not placed in 19 years since we won the very first one in 2001. So it, it doesn't happen for a small country like Denmark and we usually never place in anything to be honest. So it was definitely a huge surprise and shock for everyone and I hope that by doing this, I can get the Danish people more involved because Danes are not really following with beauty pageants. And I think one of the main thing is that we never place in anything. So I really hope that to get the whole country more involved. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to inspire a lot of girls to be more positive in life. This is the essence of beauty pageant. How about you, Miss Venezuela? What was the reaction of your family and friends after winning the crown? Yeah. Well, Mami was really amazing and incredible because it's not a secret that in Venezuela we have um, beauty pageants lovers. Y no es un secreto tampoco que el año pasado Venezuela no clasificó en el concurso y para todos los venezolanos fue un logro increíble. Todavía hoy están celebrando por este logro. And it's not a secret for anyone that last year Venezuela didn't make it to the top four, but uh, this year we think it was an amazing achievement and everybody was really happy about it. Yeah, congratulations. Um, during the pageant, going to the pageant, uh, did you have like a hint that you are going to win or uh, you just try to win? Well, I have been putting all my effort into being the best contestant for my country, Venezuela, and was a big challenge in my life because it's not a secret that we are living in a difficult time. And on the other hand, uh, my, my biggest challenge in this competition was the, the language because my native language is Spanish and was really difficult for me. But I'm really proud to be here, being a queen with my eco angel sister. Yeah. How about you, Miss Philippines, Roxy, Bayan? Well, when I join a pageant, I have less expectations, but I, of course, do my best. So I was just really surprised. It's not easy competing against 83 as equally beautiful women. So just 
for me to be able to reach reach as far as Miss Earth Water. It's it's an it's amazing, and I couldn't be happier. Yes, because you are all beautiful women all over the world. How about you, Miss USA? I mean, I'm brand new to this industry completely, so I had no idea was what I was getting myself into, what to expect, and really I feel like that played to my advantage at some points because I didn't have expectations, so I was just kind of doing me, doing my thing, and seeing how it went, and I'm just so grateful that I ended up getting so much back in return, so I might have entered with doubt, with fear, with uncertainty, but what I received in return was just overwhelmingly amazing, so I'm just so grateful for all of that yeah congratulations again okay what do you think allowed you to stand out from the rest and win your crown what do you think is your advantage but did you have like extra practice or did you memorize a, a quote or something uh, miss denmark I think what made me stand out maybe is also that I'm new to pageant. I mean, this is my first pageant. So just like Lindsay, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Uh, and I think that also was my advantage just because it just came in brand new. I didn't have any expectations or any pre, you know, meditated thoughts about what it was going to be. And then I am very uh, passionate about the environment. So I just speak from my heart and I didn't really have anyone guiding me or telling me what to say. Maybe that made it more real because it just came from my heart. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is your first time and you won. How about yeah, you, Venezuela? Yeah. How about you, Miss Venezuela? Well, uh, as I mentioned before, I, I have been putting all my effort and I consider myself <clears throat> a humble woman. Uh, discipline, kind, self-confident, and most importantly, I am an empathetic woman. And in each competition, uh, I always say, I am Stephanie Stray, Mr. Venezuela. And yo creo que muchas personas estaban muy contentas de escuchar mis reacciones. Yo creo que esa fue una de mis grandes ventajas. And I think a lot of people were very happy to see that reaction in me being so proud of my country. I think that was uh, one of my advantages. How about you, Miss Philippines? Roxy? Well, I think one of my advantages was definitely that I am a daughter of an environmentalist. So I did not have to like make up an advocacy. It was already like Miss Denmark, it, all, it was already in me nature responsibility as young as the age of six. So I was already aware of my responsibilities as an advocate also for Mother Earth. So I think that was just innate in me and it just grew every day. My, my love, my, my passion for the preservation of Mother Earth. And I know that it shows very natural to a lot of people. How about you Miss USA? To, I feel me and Michaela, we do have so much in common. So I'm um, just even to jump on that. Just, yeah, being more real because it just, we, we, w the way we would word things and how we would answer things, it just would come from our hearts. So, and which is the case with all of the winners. And I feel having that authenticity is what really made us all stand out. And I really pride myself on that and being able to have that translate well virtually, not just in person is astronomical because a lot of the times you can feel someone's energy as soon as they walk into the room. And it's a different scenario when it's virtual. So it could have went either way. So I'm very grateful that all of us really could translate our energy through the computer and have somebody get to know us, our personality, see our passion and like how dedicated, dedicated we were. So um, I think that played to my advantage very well, as well as all the rest of the girls. Yes, wow, we're very well said, Miss USA. As all of you are beauty queens right now, you all won your titles. As a beauty queen, what do you think can you do to your community or your third country to, you know, uh, make a difference as a beauty queen in your own right, as a queen, uh, Miss Denmark. Thank you. So just have to understand the question, right? It's what we can do in our own country? Yeah, in your country or in your community. What do you okay. share to make a difference as a beauty queen? So what I think is amazing is that we right now have this amazing thing called social media, which creates an amazing platform to us to reach out, not just in our own countries, but across the world. 
and which is what Miss Earth has already done. I mean, they are front runner in their industry because they're the first patent to go virtual. And I think we can use that platform now to really advocate what our advocacies are. We can advocate for the environment and our climatic issues. So that's something, of course, that I want to do. I want to really create a debate and invite people to talk because I think people need to be actively involved. Something that I'm already doing um, is that I want to work more with children for their environmental welfare and also just their mental health in general. I have been a substitute teacher and what I did at the school was that we actually created, because in Denmark we have waste management, so we sort our waste into different categories. And that is something that the children will learn from a very young age. So we did what that each grade would go out and, and collect waste on beaches, you know, in parks, just around the school, and around their hometown. And then we made like, we got the whole school involved. So across all of the, you know, ages and grades, they would all collect waste. And by the end of, I think it was a span of two months, the uh, grade that got most waste would win the competition. So they won like candy or cinema ticket. And it was a way for the children to get involved actively in a fun way because it was a game, but at the same time, we would really educate them. So I think that went so, and so successful and it, the children learned something. Uh, so that's something I want to keep on doing. And also, I'm very passionate about anti-bullying programs because I was a victim of bullying as a child. So that is something I really want to go to school and speak more about. And I think we need to rearrange our programs to focus more on preventing bullying instead of recognizing bullying. Wow, this is great advocacy, Miss Denmark. I admire it. How about you, Miss Venezuela? Um, this is a good question in this difficult time. Uh, I really want to make an impact on society and promote sustainability, promote the good use of our resources, sustainable ecotourism. But the most important thing, in my personal opinion, is to promote education to people around the world about five R's. Rethink, reduce, reuse, recycle and respect. Because I firmly believe that education is the foundation for every society. And it's not a secret that we are living in a difficult, difficult time, but we need to take advantage for our resources, our platform, for example. Uh, I am using my, my social media, my Instagram, to give a voice to the voiceless. Um, when we finally overcome this crisis, I will be visiting Venezuelan schools, promoting education and important information to our future generations. This is my biggest goal as an ambassador in this difficult time, 2020. Hello Bambinis! I'm happy to announce that we are going to have a new segment in my show. It's called Bambi Recommends. Uh, I'm going to recommend things, uh, places, food, or anything that I think is highly recommendable. For now, I'm going to recommend to all of you guys, these are the uh, contoured things or tools that I'm using that's highly recommendable for everyone. Like this one, I super love this, especially for weddings and for shoots. Although bago pa siya, kasi uh, ang ginamit ko ngayon bago, kasi I always hoard this. This is from Thailand, and I super love this, kasi matibay siya, it stays longer, at saka ang daming choices. Okay, this is from Thailand, and then I also have the Cover Girl. True blend. This is cheap, but this is 
highly recommendable kasi tignan nyo oh a little goes a long long way okay di ba contour agad yung mukha ko you could put it under your jawline to make your face look slimmer and then I also oh this is one I love this kasi this is from Makeup Forever ito talaga yung pagka medyo ang labanan pang contest or yung medyo kailangan talaga medyo matibay at saka gusto no lubog na lubog yung mukha nyo or contour na contour this bronzer from Makeup Forever is highly recommended ayan ka konti lang din ganyan pero maganda na and then MAC highlighter nakita nyo ganda di ba? konti lang to lagay nyo sa top of your cheekbone ganun din a little goes a long long way on the tip of your nose konting baba para kunyari nagpababa kayo ayan okay and then also I have this Hello Light. I don't know where I got this. Binigay lang to sa akin eh. This is an anti-aging radiance luminous powder. Powder siya, pero nakakakinis kasi meron siyang kintab-kintab effect. Ayan o. Oh. ba? Mukha na akong nagpa-facelift. And then, of course, this one. I super love this. This is called Awake from Japan. Ang effect nito, ito ay powder. This is a powder a white powder pero pag linagay mo siya sa face mo meron siyang coldness effect na parang ang fresh fresh ng skin mo ipapat pat pat mo lang siya dyan tapos magkakaroon siya ng lamig lamig effect so ang feeling mo yung face mo parang nasa Iceland na malamig na parang it stays longer and at the same time parang banat na banat ka ito yon. Kaya medyo tinitipid ko siya. Okay? So, that's all for today. You can suggest anything that you want. Um, it can be uh, a brush that you want me to recommend or anything. Pwedeng pagkain. Pwede rin namang what resort should I recommend. Lahat. This is the section that you can uh, find things cheaper, Highly recommended at saka um, what you call it? Mura lang. Okay? But if you want to find more about my tutorials you can visit the Bambi Fuentes show on my YouTube channel kasi nandun lahat ang makeover ko uh, from fi uh, start to finish. I, can, I want to do a simple girl transform into a diva lahat yon you can watch me there in my youtube channel okay once again until our next bambi recommends Last Wednesday, we were invited to attend the homecoming victory press conference of Roberta Angela Tamundong, Miss Eco Teen International 2020 at Annabelle's Restaurant, Tomas Morato, Quezon City. Congratulations! Let's watch this. I'm so happy to see the Rustan Som Holiday Tablescapes and Entertaining by my dear gorgeous friend, Pinky Tobiano. It was held last Thursday, December 10, 2020, organized by Senior Citizens Council of Barangay des Marinas. I'm so proud of you, Pinky. You did a great job. Congratulations. Let's watch this.
table loved by Pinky. Merry Christmas to everyone and I'm Pinky Tobiano and I'm a tablescapist. I'd like to say thank you so much for Response Department Store for having me today, especially for the ladies of Das Marinas Village. And today is very special because we're going to make a Christmas table that's easy and fun to do and you can do it in your own home. So in tablescaping, what's important is you have fun. And the very first rule of tablescaping is what is your theme? So our theme for today is Christmas. Second, you should know your color. Today we're going to play with a traditional color which is red and gold color of Christmas. Third, you should know how many people are going to sit on your table. So today I have a table for four. And fourth important thing in tablescaping is you have to create heights texture. You can achieve this by your accessories, your plates, or any ornaments that you have you can incorporate in your tree. So join me today as we tablescape for our lovely ladies today for Christmas. Unlike other tablescapists, I normally start with my centerpiece. I always love to have a fun centerpiece, which is a conversation piece. So here, I use the garland at home to make it as my centerpiece. And I got my old decors, which I bought from response, and incorporate new ones to make a fun table. And next thing you need is now to set your table. So here, get your placemat. So here, there, my place pad, my charger. Today I use the latest collection of Rosans, which is their Bordalio Pinero plate, because this tomato plate is timeless, and you can use it for summer or anything fun. And I like tomatoes; it's like this. So there, here, the beautiful plate, and I got this wreath to create a little fun in your table. So I put it there. Here. This is the bowl. So look, this is the wreath. I put the bowl in. So did you see the color, the texture? Wow. Next is our flatwares. I use gold flatwares. So my spoon, your knife, and this side should be facing the plate. So this one. I normally use you three fingers to measure. There. So that's how it is, my teaspoon there. When you make it long, it looks elongated and so classy. Today, we're using the new collection of Rosans, their Ralph Lauren crystals. Good crystals, you know, it sounds when you press them. It's like what they said, it's like a bead to create texture and height. I use this trees the center of my table so I still have space. I use this Anita Magsay Saiho support local now. So I put it there with my tassels. So look, I got these tassels. The final touch of my tables are normally candles. I love candles because it creates this romantic feel or a feeling of wow. So here I have like six candles. I strategically place them on my table and here you can buy dripless candles. And finally, this is my table. Merry Christmas to everyone. I'm Pinky Tobiano and wishing everyone a very Merry Christmas. And if you would like to see more tablescaping idea, please follow me on Instagram, Table Love by Pinky. Again, I'm very grateful. Always remember, a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. God bless everyone and Merry Christmas to all.
Oh, another question. The threat of COVID-19 is still very much alive. How is it in your country? Um, what can you do to help address the threat and alleviate its effect? Since pandemic is still around, and I hope vaccine will be here soon. What do you think uh, can you alleviate it in your country? And how is COVID in your country now? This you are saying? So, we have had a lot of recent developments where we're seeing a little bit more restrictions resurface and we're having a little bit more lockdowns. Our borders may potentially be closing again. So we're taking this incredibly seriously compared to the initial threat where we didn't act as efficiently and effectively. So we're starting to see that those closures again and each state is having certain restrictions resurface. So right now we we're kind of in like a limbo period, I feel, where we don't really know how we're going to move forward, what's really going to happen. So I'm just honestly, I keep on trying to advocate for just social distancing, wearing your masks, um, good hygiene, and just overall being behaviorally responsible. So it's really up to you to how much you want to give to your society to see how you can protect other people. So whenever you act with empathy and compassion, you put yourself before others, that is the only way that we're going to curb this and prevent another uptick in, in cases. And we're already seeing it escalate as of now. So we really just need to be more mindful and we have to continue acting and adhering to safety guidelines so we don't have to go through what we went through in the very beginning. Because having that hit, not just on our economy, but on our mental health and our physical health or just overall well-being, a lot of humans, like we're not going to be able to take that because we're not used to that. So we have certain needs that have to be met. So I just need to really advocate and stand by and lead by example and showing that great hygiene overall behavior responsible behavior is what we need in order to really save not just our economy, but the lives of other people. Yeah, because the cases in America is surging right now, right? But you, all, yeah, but you already have like vaccine. It has to be approved yet by the FDA. I hope the soonest the better. Yes, I, I, I hope as well. Yeah. And how about you, Miss Venezuela? Well, I think that the best way to create awareness about this real and critical fact is promoting responsibility and being a role model, a good example for other people, because it's really easy to be here giving a speech, but what really matters is our actions in the society. I consider that we need to practice three important qualities that I am practicing in my life every day in this, in this difficult time during this pandemic. Perseverance, resilience, and faith. To believe that after the storm always comes the calm. Very well said, Miss Venezuela. Thank you. How about you, Miss Denmark? Well, I have to say, I'm extremely happy that our Prime Minister has reacted as quickly as she has. Denmark was one of the first countries to go in complete lockdown when the pandemic hit, and we were also one of the first countries to open up again. And I think that was an amazing reaction because now we're still, I mean, the situation is like it is everywhere. It's not good, but it is stagnated. We don't get more and more um, people who get sick, uh, luckily. And even though we had a hit shot, we got the first mutated virus uh, or, yeah, uh, virus of the coronavirus. So it started in, I think it was North Jutland and it came from Mink. And the whole uh, northern of Denmark went in a complete lockdown. And as people know, you know, the prime minister ordered all the minks to be put down immediately. And uh, right now it's under control. So I think that's really lucky because we could have faced a situation where that mutated version of the virus would spread to the rest of the world. But thankfully it didn't. Um, so I would say that just following the government's regulations and you know, promoting love and just being aware of one another, like the, the girls have already said, and just remember that it's a very difficult time for people and many people feel alone. And it makes me so happy to see that a lot of people have formed groups where they help those in extra needs. So if someone is elderly or they can't go out or they're, uh, they, maybe they are sick and they have to stay indoors, people will go out and buy food for them and buy whatever they need and leave it, uh, leave it at the front door. And that really warms my heart and I hope that's something that other people will look at and be a part of because we really need to help each other. Yes, in times like this, we should all help each other. 
How about you, Roxy, from the Philippines? Though I have a very optimistic and positive personality, I have to admit, and I know you know this, Mam Bambi, here in the uh -huh. Philippines, the data, it, it, seeing the data, it's still, it's still quite sad in all of us Filipinos, but I want to look up the silver lining of it all, that the spirit of Bayanihan or helping each other did prevail amidst this pandemic, mostly when the typhoon hit, hit us, so it's more of Filipinos hurt helping each other because when we're left with all these tra tra tragedies and fortuitous events, we're left with no choice but to just hold on to faith and love and be there for each other. And uh, it's really heartbreaking seeing a lot of Filipinos lose their jobs because of the effect of the pandemic and also wor worldwide. A lot of, uh, like my sister abroad, her partner is having struggles with his job also because of the pandemic. Oh, yeah. So it's in, in Belgium. So that's really tragic seeing this happening around the world and a lot of people could not no longer eat three meals a day. So I was eager to partner up with the Department of Agriculture's Plant, Plant, Plant program where we give away free seeds and free seedlings for them to be able to grow their own fruits and vegetables at home. That's a great step towards sustainability and at least they would have that sense of security and I just don't want to see anybody like go hungry. So if they learn to embrace having that minimal life and growing their own food, then I think they would be secure. Well, very well said, Ms. Philbin. Well, this pandemic has really changed deeply our lives so i hope that uh, soon we'll be go we'll go back to normal and let's all stay positive because this is all we can do and pray hard that everybody will be safe and nobody gets sick and then to go live again my next question is if you want to change something in your life what would it be what do you think would it be if there's anything you want to change let's start with miss usa do you mean by change like a uh, characteristic or something physical? What exactly? Traits or physical, whatever, whatever you want to change. Well, from what I've even learned throughout this competition, because I mean, it's human, we doubt ourselves a lot, some, especially going into new worlds that are filled with uncertainty. So just proving kind of myself wrong through all of this competition and showing myself what I'm capable of, that's what I am already, I already believe I've changed that, but I want to continue to pursue that and change it even further where I continue to push myself and have such a, an amazing and successful reign with my fellow uh, queens. So I just want to continue to do that. Show, what, show myself, not just others, what I'm capable of, surf surpass the potential that I already, already thought that I had, and just continue to make a difference in, in my life, in my sister's lives, in the world's life. So I just want to set that bar for me and I want to keep on setting it high so I'm always constantly reaching my goals. Wow. That's nice, Miss USA. How about you, Miss Denmark? If you want to change something in your life, like it's, maybe it's physical traits or whatever, what do you think? Do you have anything to change? It's, it's a really good question and it's tough because growing up there were so many things I wanted to change but looking back now I don't think I would change anything. I think everything that has happened to me and for me has led me to where I am right now and even you know even all of the bad stuff that happens in your life is something that you grow from. I mean you grow from your mistakes. You don't grow when you get something right. Nothing. So all of those mistakes every time you fall and slip you know that's where you grow. That's where you get up again and you learn something and you take something away from that situation. So I, I wouldn't change anything even if I had the power to. Oh, that's great. You want to cross. You don't have to change anything. <laughs> How about you, Miss Venezuela? This is a good and important person for me and I prefer to speak in Spanish because in Spanish I'm more so confident. Si tuviera que cambiar algo de mí, Creo que sería no escuchar comentarios de terceras personas, comentarios negativos que me desestabilicen o me hagan sentir mal o me hagan creer que no puedo. Well, if I have to change one thing, I think it would maybe not to listen or not to pay too much attention to negative comments from critics that would, might make me feel bad. Creo que cuando realmente tienes un objetivo, tienes que ir durante esa competencia, durante todo el camino, con los oídos sordos, 
porque serán tus hechos y no tus palabras los que le demuestren a las personas que tú sí eres capaz de lograrlo. I think if you have a very specific and a very important goal in your mind, I think you need to move forward and let your actions do the talking. That's a great attitude. I like that. How about you, Miss Philippines, Roxy, Bayan? Well, I wish that people would take me more seriously and see me as a mature individual because I've always seen as the young girl who competed in this in, in a pageant even when I joined and during Miss Philippines Earth I was always I looked so soft spoken and I was a nobody and no one would listen to me because I was shy and I was soft spoken I was young but I think there's nothing wrong with being young and being new to everything that I have now I learned to find power in my voice and I I learned to gain that confidence. So I think, yes, I want people to take me more seriously as a spokesperson. But I think throughout this journey, mostly in Miss Earth, I think I, I, was, I, I did my best and people saw the change in me and how much I bloomed into this individual who is now stronger, a stronger speaker that a lot of people would look back to and listen to. Wow. All of you are not only beautiful, but all of you are very intelligent women. I admire your advocacy and I admire your guts and I admire your inner beauty and this is my last question for you and um what do you, what do you think uh, miss earth has done to you or what does this miss earth crown mean to you uh, miss usa i love this question because i could go on and on so i'm going to try and condense it But Miss Earth has done so much for me. And that is why I just want to give so much back because honestly, they changed my life. They changed my country's history. So it's given me so much. I can only hope to return that favor and give everything that I have. And whenever I found out that I won, I told them, I was, I told everyone, I'm going to pour my heart and my soul into this organization because they've given me so much already. They've made me show that I'm capable, that I'm deserving, that I'm worthy. And I want to let them know how important that was to me and that I'm able to express my passion and give myself an opportunity to make a difference in the world. That is something so great. That is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I'm going to treat it as such and I'm going to change the world. I'm going to give all the, the influence that they have given me and spread that out to the world filled with love, compassion, empathy, and just educate and raise awareness and just have everyone grow together. So I'm so excited. It means the absolute world to me. And I thank you for that question because I'm so eternally grateful and words will never be able to express that. So I try my best to articulate it. Um, I still feel like it doesn't come, come across as much as I want it to, but that's a little bit of what I can kind of get into words <laughs> of how I feel. Very well said, Miss Jose. I admire your answer and I hope that um, all the girls will emulate you and all the other ways. How about you, Miss Denmark? Oh my God, I mean, Lindsay already said it so well. So <laughs> what can I say after that? I think they have, again, they have changed my life and also, of course, my country's history. And I'm so grateful uh, for Miss Earth just for existing, for branching out and for doing something new that no one else has been doing and for combining, really combining something that is more entertainment with education and creating awareness and getting the younger population on board as well as the older generation. I would say for me personally to give me a platform so I can speak and I can, my voice can be heard. And really, with all the changes that I think we can bring to the table and everything, because in Denmark, we are front runners on sustainable and renewable energy. We doing, we're doing a lot. And, but we're such a small country that we're often overlooked. So I would love to bring more of that to the table and come up with new ideas and new innovative solutions. I think we need to get the younger generation involved and start you know, thinking of new ways of doing things. And, Miss Earth is making that possible, so thank you for that. Thank you, Miss Denmark. How about you, Miss Venezuela? Well, the crown for me, it's an example of nothing is impossible and effort leads to success. I'm really proud to be part of Miss Earth organization because we are a good example for other people that despite the fact that you are living in a difficult time, nothing is impossible and going backwards is not an option and standing still is not enough. The most important thing is to work together because together we are braver, stronger and more united than ever. But 
I consider that the most important thing in my life is not the crown. The most important thing is all the support and all the positive comments that I have been receiving during all this competition. Well, thank you, Miss Venezuela. Very well answered question. How about you, Miss Philippines? Can I just say, I love what they all said. It's giving me the goosebumps. How could I go after that? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, you all deserve the crown. <laughs> Thank you. Well, as for me, I look at the Miss Earth pageant as my destiny. I feel like I waited my whole life for it. Uh, it's surprising when people hear me saying I dropped my job for this pageant. Ever since I joined last January for Miss Philippines Earth, I gave my entire year for it. Though I, I'm not working now, I have this fulfillment that I didn't get from anything from my acting career, from all the commercials I get. It's, it's, it's nothing to what I feel. So more than the fame, more than the fortune that comes with it, it is the fulfillment. So having, being an advocate for Mother Earth, it, it wakes me up in the morning full of purpose and makes me go to sleep soundly at night, knowing I made a difference. It's a drive that comes only from the heart and it I just can't wait to do more volunteer work. And this is, I think that this is for me. This is my destiny. You are all very intelligent and I can hear all your advocacies. And you have the very nice platform, the Miss Earth. And I think all of you, the four of you can do work hand in hand together, unite, and we can preserve Mother Earth because Mother Earth is already sick. We have to do something in our own little way, in our own whatever, big way, whatever we can do to save it, okay? One last um, message to all your fans because I know that there's a lot of fans all over the world waiting for your message. Okay, this is your chance to say anything to your fans. Miss Denmark, you wanna say anything to your fans? Yes, I want to say thank you so much and thank you for all the love and support that I have gotten over the last couple of uh, days. It's been absolutely overwhelming, so thank you so much. Um, and something that I hope that people will take away from this is to really listen to what these girls have to say and, and take it to heart. And see, because I heard so many great things that we can do as individuals, small changes that we can make in our everyday life. So I hope that people really take that to heart and, and think about that and discuss it with your friends and family, really spread the word because your voice will be heard and your voice is big. You know, don't never underestimate yourself and your inner voice. And also I hope that when we stand together, we can put more pressure on the governments to make legal regulations because the government has a huge responsibility and there's a power in numbers. So when we stand together, we can get a lot achieved. Oh yeah, that's true. How about you, Ms. Philippines? I just want to thank everybody for your unconditional love and support even up to this day, even though it, the coronation has ended, the support continues. Thank you so much for uplifting uh, this beautiful cause as well with my eco angel sisters. You guys are amazing. And I know that we are facing the hardest times, but know that we are given this life because we are strong enough to live it. Know that you are never alone because we are together in prayer. Just take one day at a time. Don't be too hard on yourself. Keep the faith, keep the love. And of course, that is be a reminder for us to Think about our actions, redirect our steps, and redefine what to do next because Mother Earth is, as we see it, it's falling apart and because all, also because of our abuse towards the, our biodiversity. So I hope this sets us a reminder for us to walk lightly on Earth and that this serve us a wake-up call for us to be better individuals, for there to be a better future and so that our only home, Mother Earth, could still be habitable. Thank you, everyone. No, very well said. How about you, Ms. Venezuela? I would like to say thank you so much to all of the viewers who are watching us around the world. Thank you so much, Bambi, for this amazing opportunity. And thank you, Venezuelan people. Thank you, Filipinos, for all your support and your positive comments about me. I firmly believe that I will put all my effort into being the best queen for you in this difficult year, 2020, and in the next year, of course. Thank you so much. How about you, Miss Earth 2020, Miss USA? Well, firstly, thank you for just having us, Bambi. It's 
it's greatly appreciated. And thank you everyone who's just been tuning in and watching. I really do hope that you listen to my fellow sisters and really take it to heart because we're here just to help and we're passionate about that. And I thank you all for the outpouring of love and support that you guys have shown me and continue to show me as well. That I please ask, do not stop because I look forward to all of that every single day. So thank you. You guys are my guiding light through all of this and continue to inspire me and motivate me to do more. And I just want to introduce the concept of just being more than your country. And now more than ever, we've actually been able to see that with this pandemic where this is a worldwide pandemic. Everyone is going through this. Everyone has shown more compassion and empathy and shown each other that they can put others and just an overall concept before themselves for the betterment of not just their society, but the world. And we need to do that for our environment. So we need to be more than our country, act more than just a nation and act as a world. And together with unity, that is when we'll always be successful. So thank you guys so much. And my light is fading. <laughs> my ring light just kind of like turned. Okay. Thank, thank you. You. you are all amazing queens. And I wish to see you soon personally i can visit your country like i've never been to venezuela and to denmark although i'll go to the usa because some of my relatives are staying there so i know what's happening there and you know pray to god that soon this pandemic will end and i would like to tell you that you are all beautiful inside and out and may all your advocacies all come true and may god bless you all and thank you so much for guesting in my show. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. It was a night full of glam, beauty, and intelligence. I've learned a lot from these beautiful ladies from their advocacies. I hope you enjoyed this evening as well. Well, my favorite mantra my quote don't forget that working hard is not all about winning but it's all about not giving up it's applicable i think to everyone not to give up on anything it's the essence of winning of not giving up it's by maya angelou and i super love it good night and happy weekend everyone don't forget to follow share subscribe comment and suggest any topic that you want us to talk about. And don't forget to follow me on all my social media accounts. Bambi Puentes on Facebook account, that's my personal account. The Bambi Puentes Show on my Facebook account. Bambi Puentes on my Instagram account. And our newest baby, YouTube, The Bambi Puentes Show.